We'd now like to discuss some of the lights we may see at an aerodrome. Be warned, these make good question topics. Aerodromes may have an identification beacon which flashes a two-letter group in Morse every 12 seconds. Identification beacons are either red for military or green for a civil aerodrome. There is often confusion between an identification beacon and an aerodrome beacon. Aerodrome beacons are not often seen these days and almost never when there is already an identification beacon. These are intended to be used at night where aircraft usually locate the airfield by visual means when reduced visibility is frequently an issue or should the aerodrome be difficult to locate because of the surrounding terrain. Aerodrome beacons usually flash white-white or less commonly green-white. Both types of beacon where present would be illuminated by night and by day in poor visibility whenever the aerodrome is active. Light signals for the control of aerodrome traffic are set forth in Rule 61 of the ANO. Here, the meaning of light and pyrotechnic signals from ground to air and vice versa are defined. I'm afraid there is no shortcut and these will simply have to be memorised. Light signals can be sent from an aircraft. However, today flares are not often carried. Flashing the landing and or the navigation lights indicates that you are compelled to land. A red flare means that immediate assistance is required, and a green flare by night means, may I land. By day, this same signal means, may I land in a direction different from that indicated by the landing T in the signal square. Light signals from the ground have a different meaning depending on whether they are directed to an aircraft in the air or to one on the ground. When directed to an aircraft in flight, the signals are and mean as follows. A steady red light means do not land, give way to other traffic and continue circling. A flashing red light means do not land, aerodrome not available for landing. A red flare means do not land, wait for permission. A flashing green light means return to the aerodrome and wait for permission to land. A steady green light means you may land. A flashing white light means landed this aerodrome after receiving a steady green light. When directed to an aircraft on the ground, the signals are and mean as follows. A steady red light means stop. A flashing red light means move clear of the landing area. A flashing green light means clear to taxi on the manoeuvring area. A steady green light means you may take off. A flashing white light means return to your start point on the aerodrome. These light signals are all listed in the ANO rules of the air and are reproduced on the sleeve of the CD. Obstructions within 15 kilometers of an aerodrome that protrude through a defined obstacle identification surface are considered to be an obstruction to aircraft either in flight or on the ground and will be illuminated at night or in poor visibility. Those not over 45 metres are marked with a single red light. Higher ones may carry additional red lights to identify their outline. On the surface, obstructions are lit with portable red lights. Mobile obstructions, like vehicles, may have a flashing yellow light, and emergency vehicles responding to a call will have blue lights. At night, an aircraft moving on the manoeuvring area of an aerodrome must display its navigation lights. This is so that an observer may determine its relative path. Stationary aircraft with engines running must display their red anti-collision light. It is good practice to illuminate this a short time before engines start to warn anyone around the aircraft that you will shortly have its engine or engines running. A pilot is permitted to switch off or reduce the intensity of any flashing light if, in the air, it will adversely affect the performance of his duties or on the ground if they will subject an outside observer to harmful dazzle. To this end, we normally only illuminate the aircraft strobe lights just before takeoff, not during taxi. The legislation relating to flight in the facility of an aerodrome was discussed during Unit 2, but I would just like to spend a couple of minutes reviewing these rules, as they are clearly appropriate to our discussions of aerodrome operations. So, in summary, and an aerodrome which has air traffic control you must obey their instructions. 
the aircraft commander must conform to the circuit pattern being flown by other aircraft, and unless otherwise informed, by signal square markings or communication from the ground, all turns will be to the left hand. An aircraft landing, or on final, has the right of way, and if more than one aircraft is approaching the airfield, the lower one has the right of way, but it must not cut into the final approach in order to establish this right of way. An aircraft which is making an emergency landing automatically has the right of way and priority over all other traffic. You must not land on a runway if it is occupied by another aircraft. The only exception to this is where the Air Traffic Control Service has authorised you to land after. Where takeoff and landing are not confined to a runway and there is another aircraft on the strip, you must take off or land to keep the other aircraft on your left and having landed, clear to the left as soon as it is safe to do so.